Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Who is this Tom guy? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Right down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I want to talk about a story we keep hearing about, but we never hear, except on the news, from the alleged victims Oh, there are so many victims. But we never get to talk to them. We never get to know a lot about them. And I've decided I'd like to know more about them. Because I don't personally know anybody like this. I keep hearing there are victims. Oh, these poor victims. Oh, they've been victims of the system. They've been victims of predators. But then I I don't know any of these people. And it's not that I don't know people who have money problems or don't know people who are in trouble. I do. I just don't know any of these kinds of victims. They're on the front page of the newspaper. We talk about them in commercials. Uh, We hear about them on the news. We see statistics. But we never actually meet any of the people and get to talk to them. And I would like to talk to them. Because you know I've got my own special way of digging in when someone claims to be a victim of something. And that is my game plan here. I mean, it's the biggest story. It's been the biggest story for months. It's at the heart of the recession that the president continues to say we don't have. I don't know if the president's name is Herbert Hoover or George Bush, but there he is. We're not in a recession. Just ask the president. Unbelievable. It's at the heart of every story about our lousy economy. It's the story of people who've been foreclosed upon. People who took out mortgages on their homes. They jumped in when mortgage rates were super low back four, five, six years ago. And at some point in time... The mortgage readjusted, which they do if it's an adjustable rate mortgage after five years. Many of them readjust to a uh, a more contemporary interest rate. And then these poor victims, we're told, are thrown out in the street. They're going to lose their homes. They, they Their credit rating is shot. It's all because they've been victims of the big bad bank and the big bad mortgage company. Now, uh... I hear all the boo-hoo-hooing about these poor people who are such victims, but I, I've never really spoken to one. So I'd like to talk to somebody who's been told by the bank or the mortgage company they're taking the house back. I'd like to talk to somebody who's been foreclosed upon. I would like to talk to somebody who has lost their house. And I'd like to get the details of how it happened. I'd like to find out all about it. And then after I find out all about it, I'd like to give you my opinion about what happened to you. So this is very simple, will not require a lot of setup. If you have been foreclosed upon, if you have lost your house, if you've been thrown out of your home because of an inability to pay the mortgage, I want to talk to you right now. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Get in, get off, get out. That's my motto, man. Don't be stuck with one girl too long, because it's nothing but headaches and problems. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's 
It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. All right, we keep hearing about the people who are victims. They've been victimized. They've lost their home. They're victims. Let's talk to them right now. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Pete on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, you know, I just got some hard times. And, uh... So, you know, now I'm selling everything. Wait, wait, wait. What, what, are the, what are the hard times? Well, I, I bought me a little pad. I bought me a little house for like 40 grand. And I 40 grand? Pad. Yeah, you believe it or not. 40 and grand I, would not buy you a cardboard yeah, box to live on a street yeah, corner in Los Angeles. Dad, this is the truth. Up in Ojai, up in the boonies, right? Up in the mountains. You spent 40 grand in Ojai. Yeah, up in this little shack up in the hill. So I built it. This is the truth, Dad. Now, I built it myself. And now I went and started a business. I took out some some mortgages or some uh, finances on it, you know, some money to start a company. And then I bumped to eighty grand. And then I was almost going to lose my business, so I got another fifty k. And boom, boom. Now I'm like two hundred eighty thousand in the hole. I had. Sparkling credit before this. I always pay my bills. I'm not a yocher. You know, I'm, I don't knock no freebies at all. And uh, man, now my credit is shot, and I can't refi. My mortgage jumped to twenty six hundred a month. You know, and then I got no darn insurance. And my baby's got diabetes. You know, my government won't help me out. Where's my government? Why should the government help you out? You did this to yourself. Well, how about just a little bit of help? You know, I paid my tens you... of thousands in taxes, you know. Well, wait a minute, but you, you did this to yourself. Uh, no, I agree, Dad. I agree. I don't want no help with the mortgage. I just want a little help. I just want a little insurance for my, for my little girl. That's all, Dad. I work hard, you know, and, I'm, and, uh, and I ain't going to lose my house. I'm selling everything I got to keep my house. I'm selling my Harleys. I'm selling my, all, my, all my toys I bought, you know, all the things I bought to come up. Yeah, but you. But the point is, you went out and overextended yourself. Why should anybody help you now? Well, I don't Why? If you curse, like, stop it. If you curse again, we're cutting you off. Oh, darn it. Darn it. Darn it. It won't happen again. Darn it. Yeah, I, I'm not a quitter, Tom. I'm not a quitter. You yeah, know? But, but, yeah. But, but, you're, but you're a loser, okay? You did this. You're I not agree. a victim. Yes, you sir. did it to yourself. I agree. Yes, sir, I agree. So I why should the government bail money. you out? Why should anybody bail you out? Well, because they take my tax dollars. They sure ain't shy about that. Are yeah, they? yeah, but guess what? The tax dollars are not to pay so that people can take wild yeah. risks, so starting they, businesses. They, they That's not what it's for. Uh, to give away to a bunch of illegal aliens and take care of their kids instead of a hardworking, honest citizen that pays their taxes like me. Wait, well, wait. You say you're a hardworking, honest citizen. You, you, how yes, many more? How many mortgages did you take to support a failing business? How how much money did you borrow to support this failing business? About, uh, I'd say about 140, sir. And what business did you have borrowing that kind of money? You clearly knew nothing about the business you were getting into. You bet your butt, yes, sir. I didn't know nothing about business at all. You so why should we? Why, you know, you see the the reason there the reason there are great benefits to starting a business and succeeding is because there is risk involved. You, you when you invest money in a business, you're taking a risk. So if you don't know anything about a business, it is not our job to bail you out. No. I agree, sir. I agree. I was just hoping for some uh, for you to shine some light on my problem. I well, yeah, but you see, you but you you will never take responsibility for what you did. Oh, I will take responsibility, one hundred percent, sir. I will. Well, then it's your job to pay back the people you owe money to, or yes, file for bankruptcy yes, and be a complete deadbeat. You bet. No, no, sir. I refuse to do that. I, you know, I, I got to tell you something, pal. You could so. be, you could be a very nice guy. I'm glad you're a listener and all that. But it is what you're doing is immoral. Borrowing money without the knowledge or the plan to pay the money back is, is immoral. No, I have the plan. No, I'm paying it back. I am. I, 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 I am paying it back. I refuse not to. I will pay it back, sir. 
I would be responsible for everything I've done. Really? So yeah, they took your house away? Are you? Uh, have you no, been sir. kicked out? No, sir. No, I just sold my Harley for like four grand, so now I just made two mortgage payments. So I got one more to make, and I'll be caught up, and then hopefully they can give me a refi to get my payments down a little lower so I can live. Right. But the government shouldn't give you a penny. No, I want nothing from the, from the government for my mortgage, sir. I just would like a little help for my little girl's diabetes for some uh, health insurance for my little girl, that's all. Well, I understand that, too. But, you know, if you hadn't invested in a business you knew nothing about, you would have yeah. money to buy health insurance. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. If you, you had right, put man. your you kid right. ahead of some stupid harebrained scheme to start a business you knew nothing about, uh, yeah. your child would have health insurance. not our fault. I wish I would have called you before I, before I jumped in there. I'll, uh -huh. I'll, I'll both feet full in, boy. I wish I would have hollered at you then. Well, me too. Thank you. Jesus. We're talking to the poor victims who've been foreclosed. 1-800-5-800-TOM. <laughs> That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Richard on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. This is Richard. Yes. Hey, um, I bought a house, 2005. For 440, um, I went through two layoffs. I'm working again, but um, I just figured, you know, the house has dropped so much it wasn't worth struggling to hold on to. I uh, put my house on the market for a short sale. I got one offer for 220, exactly 50 percent of what I paid for it. Why did you put your house on the market? Um, well, with the two job losses within four months, I just had exhausted all my financial reserves, and, you know, me and my wife are really struggling to make things work, and at the Were time, you able to afford a house when you bought it? For yeah. real? Yeah. Yeah, but that also but, assumes you can afford it when the right. interest rate adjusts upward, when you use an adjustable rate mortgage. Did you calculate your budget for how much it would cost to pay that mortgage? No. Not exactly, no. Why and not? I, I got a, a five-year arm, you know, just for right. mortgage. And uh, it was interest only for five years. And, you know, within five years, the plan was, you know, refinance into a, a, a more stable loan. Um, you know, all things were going in the upward direction. We would have equity by then and this and that because we financed it 100%. So Why did you assume that uh, prices would keep going up? Oh, man, I don't know. It's just anybody I ever talk to in real estate, you know, my job. Well, who are all salespeople, yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they, uh, you know, they, they talked it uh, talked it up pretty good. And, yeah, what are they know. saying now? Do you talk to those people again? Oh, yeah, it's still. Are they ready to help you make your uh, mortgage payment? Hell no. Are they ready to buy your house from you at what you paid for it? No, nope, but they're ready to get a commission off me short selling. Sure they are. That's right. Now, let's, let's do a little thinking together here for a second, okay? Sure. Uh, when you got an adjustable rate mortgage in, let's say it was 2002, I'll bet. No, it was... Uh... Uh, 2005. I haven't. I, my, 2005. Yeah, my mortgage never adjusted, but because I was, you know, I kept losing my job, and then the jobs that I was getting weren't paying me as much. It wasn't worth it for us to keep on struggling. What do you do for a living? I work in construction. I'm a construction estimator. What made you think that that would be a consistent enough mode of employment to pay a mortgage on a house? Just uh, up until the time, you know, construction had been booming for, you know. But you do understand years. those things are boom and bust cycles. You do know that, right? I do now. Well, you do now. So you hadn't heard about the history of the construction business or what happened at the end of the 80s or the early 90s to construction? You didn't know about that? I vaguely remember it as, a, as like a teenager with my parents. So you wrongly assumed that the price of real estate would go in a straight line upward. No, but I, at the time, I didn't expect it. I expected it to go down, but I didn't expect it to, to like, do a nosedive and a 180-degree nosedive like it did. Well, let's let's think this out together, okay? Let's forget your mortgage for a second. Sure. In in 2001, we had something called 9-11. Yes. And after 9-11, uh, in order to keep the economy from going in the tank, uh, Alan Greenspan, who was the uh, head of the Federal Reserve Bank, dramatically cut short-term interest rates. And ultimately, the effect of doing that was that long-term interest rates dropped as well, and that is what mortgage rates are based on. Mm -hmm. You with me? Yes. 
So a bunch of a bunch of maroons ran right down to the real estate office and said, "I want to buy real estate right now, right now. It's the best lowest rates ever. Oh, I can't but the best, lowest rates in thirty years. This is the best opportunity." And they all went out at the exact same time, like a bunch of lemmings, and they all bought houses. Exactly, and that's what I've seen happening to me um, in the next three years. So. I just basically would rather pull the plug now. Yeah, if you knew anything about adjustable rate mortgages, you, you know that they all readjust. Yep. Usually it's after five years. Let's do the math. It's 2002. January 1st, 2002. It's about three months after 9 11. Mm-hmm. Okay. That means around January 1st, 2007, uh, the devil is coming to extract his payment. <laughs> Wouldn't you think? Yep, and uh, that's all. Wouldn't the that mean that in 2007, the last place you would want to be is in a tenuous position of having to make a mortgage payment? Yeah, exactly. Or trying to sell a house? Or trying to sell a house, yeah. I mean, I told the guys who work with me have heard me talk about this ad infinitum. I said I was going to buy a house the minute there was blood in the streets. Yeah. And I knew there would be blood in the streets in 2007. Yeah, well, like right now we got an offer for 220. So I tell people, people are are not buying homes right now, but they are trying to steal them if they can. Well, they're not stealing them. Well, you stole a house because you could never afford one in the first place. Your being able to buy a house kept somebody who had really good credit and had a really good steady job from buying a house. People like you kept people like me from owning a house. No, I never really uh, saw it that way. That's how it is. So uh, finally, uh, you're getting your just dessert. You now, who never belonged in a house in the first place, are getting the boot. Uh, And now somebody who is consistently employed, unlike you, is going to be able to finally buy the house they've not been able to afford for the last five years while all you guys have been partying in your homes. Yeah, well, you know, I, I feel I feel like I, I was I was a failure deal, but at least you know I feel like some people they they really went out and went haywire and started buying trailers and RVs and. But even you, you couldn't afford this house. Yeah, well, it turns out you're right. No, no, it doesn't turn out. That was exactly what was going to happen. There was no doubt about it. Well, um, you know, at the time, like I said, just. It was like a frenzy, you know. Every time you tell yourself, "Well, maybe next year you'll buy one," and then it's a hundred thousand dollars more the next year, and uh, I bought at the exact peak of the of the market. And you now, realize if you waited until now, you could get a good deal on a house. Yep. yep. But you didn't. Yeah, I could get my house for two twenty. You could have spent the last five years saving towards a down payment, a big one. Yeah. And then you could have bought a bigger, better house for less money. Exactly. Had you waited, but no, you had to get the house the same time everybody else was getting a house. Yep. You know, I don't feel like a, a victim, like you're saying, like all these people are saying a victim, but I just feel like I'm pulling the plug on the situation myself because why would I struggle to pay for a house that was grossly overvalued to begin with? And that was also another mistake that I made, seeing that, you know, the, 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 the appreciation of these homes was skyrocketing so bad it had to backlash like it did. I mean, I mean, do you think the government should be bailing people like you out? I don't. No, but I think that the banks should maybe uh, flex, be a little bit more flexible on the terms if they want to, you know, continue to get payments because, you know, the banks don't make no money by owning these houses. Well, uh, the point is I just don't want any laws made uh, that are going to result in any kind of government subsidies for people like you. Right. It's people. You know what? I, I make a good living. I wanted to buy a house back in 2003, 2004. I would have been insane to do that. Yep. <laughs> so I waited. Yeah. And, and I just got an amazing deal on a house, but I bought my house in November, what year? 2007. <laughs> when the blood was on the street. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, Let me give you a word of advice for the future. This goes for stocks or cars or houses or anything else. Please. The time to buy something is when no one else wants it. I've heard you say that before, yeah. If everybody else wants what you want, you're going to pay for it. Yep. Yep. I just bought a house. But people are telling me I'm crazy. That's how I know I made the right deal. Yeah, since I'm, since I'm anon- anonymous here... Um, you know, I, I've heard also through people in the industry that the banks don't realize when you when you lose a house right away, and that you can go and buy another house really quick, and that's kind of what I'm thinking about doing, is trying to buy another house now that somebody else is losing, 
But but wait a minute, you're going to be in the same position because you're broke. Mortgage rates are higher now. Yeah, and you have to have a down payment now. And you don't have consistent employment. Do you want to get yourself into a bigger hole? <laughs> no, but you're a renter, son. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather struggle to hold on to a house that you know I picked up for uh, two hundred thousand than one that I picked up for four hundred and forty. Yeah, but again. <laughs> The point is, you can't make the payments on a two hundred thousand dollar house. You don't have it. So oh, you mean like if I lost my job, which you frequently do? Yeah, then these last couple of years, yeah, it's kind you of can't afford it. There are some things in life you just can't afford. I've told this story on the air before. This summer, I've been in L.A. twenty years. Okay, I came here in nineteen eighty eight. Uh, do you know when I bought a house? And I've been a, a minimum six-figure income since I've lived in L.A. Do you know when I bought a house? I was here in 1988. When do you think I bought a house? 1991. 1997. Seven, well. Eight years. Eight years of watching people that held their houses. They had pools. And they had garages. and They didn't have to look for parking. Mm -hmm. But you know when I bought a house? When that, not well, not only when I could afford it, because it's not enough to afford it. I wanted to buy a house when nobody else wanted a house. I bought a house that was on the market for six months. Hmm. Yeah, that's one thing to look for. You don't want to buy a house like I bought my house before it was even on the market. Well, that's, if you're bidding against other people to buy a house, if you find yourself having to look for houses that aren't listed yet because you want to get the first look at them because so many people want houses. You're buying at the wrong time. Yeah. The time to buy a house is when somebody says, please come see my house. Please, I've had nobody looking. I've had no offers. Please. <laughs> the house I just bought was on the market for three months. It had one serious person look at it in that period of time. One. Yeah. And that person went and bought another house somewhere else. Well, hindsight's twenty twenty for me now, I guess. Well, uh, when the uh, people I was buying the house from said to me uh, uh, they were uh, not going to move on the price, I pointed out, I said, yeah, when, does, when do you think the next qualified buyer is going to come along? And yeah. they gave in. <laughs> Probably a wise choice on their side. Well, the point I'm making to you is, you know, you, don't don't get yourself in more trouble and buy another house. So what should I do? Rent. You're a renter. Yeah. Rental units are for people who don't consistently work. They are for deadbeats. They are for people who have FICO scores below 600. That's who they're for. Yeah, I have perfect credit, too, and this is the only blemish on my credit. It's a big one. Yeah. Yeah, perfect credit. What's your FICO score now? Um, I'm not sure, but when I bought the house, it was 725. No, no. We, we're not talking about history. We're talking about today. <laughs> I, I really couldn't tell you. I'm yeah. just, I, it's I a lot it's lower than 725 now. It's probably lost at least 200 points. Right. Yeah. You're a renter. Uh, yep. Stop digging a bigger hole for yourself. So what do you think? Just rent until eternity comes? and You rent until you've got enough to put down at least 15%. Mm -hmm. Get a stable loan. And you and you buy when you know that you can make the you get a fixed rate loan and you you buy at a time when you know that you'll be able to make the payments every month for the foreseeable future, and that means more than three months. Mm -hmm. yeah. You thought you were uh, getting a great deal by buying a house. You're getting your ass kicked. That's exactly right. <laughs> Yeah, I figured, well, at least I'm not out in the high desert. Or but, you're still, but you're still using the same mindset again. Well, I'm going to buy another. I want to get one that's in the 200s. <laughs> but you know, the point is, you still have to pay all the expenses of ownership. Yeah. Property taxes, insurance, earthquake insurance, yeah. maintenance. Yeah, my house payment was 2500 bucks, and that did not include the insurance or the taxes. Right. I had to pay that outside, and that was only the interest. Right. Yeah. So you really think it's a smart idea to buy another one? It, only if, I can, if it's one I can afford. You can't afford any house on the market in a neighborhood where you can come home at night and, and, and unlock your door safely. Yeah. So get that idea out of your head right now. Okay, Tom. All right? All right. Can you blow me up? I certainly can. Tom.
Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You'll be glad to know when I did the DTB email I got from my girl said, and if I hear the name Tom Likas one more time, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. Uh, 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. We are talking to the poor victims of foreclosure. And if that's you, call me 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Uh, this is Chad on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Good afternoon, Tom. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. You know the official greeting of the Tom Likas Show, don't you? Yes. Hello, Dad. Hello. Yes. Hello. Because this show is heard in five time zones, plus uh, the station in L.A. reruns the show at various times of day, like 3 a.m., and we don't want people thinking they're listening to a tape, even when they are. <laughs> hey, Dad, I got a, I got a problem here. Hey, uh, I should have listened to you probably 13 years ago, which I didn't know about you for the last five years. I've been listening to you uh, every day for the last five years, my first time calling. So what I have to say is this, that I did not listen to you. I got married when I was 23, did all that stuff, had a felony. The wife had some money. You had, wait, wait, stop. You had a felony? Yeah, I had a felony because I did drugs and I wrote a bunch of bad checks. So Good work there, Ace. So I took her money and paid that off, so I didn't have a felony. So then everything was going fine, and then the last five years, all of a sudden... I find out my house payment went from uh, $950 up to 1700 Why was that a shock to you? Why the heck would it go up? I have a Because fixed, uh, you, wait a minute, you do not have a fixed rate loan. You don't. Oh, I did, but my, I found out that my wife, she can uh, go ahead and get a second mortgage without me signing it. <laughs> and let me guess, you never got a prenup. Uh, no. Good work. Nope, so I screwed up big time. So now my house payment's... Uh, is seventeen hundred dollars a month, and uh, I I told her I said I can't afford to make this payment. I said we got two cars and all this stuff. I said so, the only thing that would le there is left to do is uh, pack my stuff and go. And so, so you did. Well, I am actually uh, getting the U-Haul uh, right now. I'm packing up today. Are you serious? What did she say when you told her that? Uh, she started freaking out, crying on the phone, and uh, she's like, I want to talk to you. And I said, talk is over. We, I said, you know, the house payment, you know, has been late for the last three months. There's nothing to talk about. Oh, boy. So I just want to say that I'm a renter now. You, you, you've you been a renter all along. Yeah, pretty much renting that uh, big old long uh, vagina. That's that's exactly what you've been doing. Yeah, I know. And, I, and, and she I, lied to you, and uh, I bet she was unrepentant, too, when you found out that she lied to you and took out another mortgage you asked her uh, uh why didn't you tell me what was her response to that well i didn't want you to be uh um i didn't want you to get all stressed out about all the bills and stuff that we have ah i see so just find out about them was a big surprise yeah so now uh i just uh <clears throat> after after i get the u-haul i'll bring that back and then i got another appointment to talk to a guy about we buy houses for what you owe uh-huh so i'm talking to him and uh, he told me to call him back in a little bit. So hopefully that uh, the house, you know, I can at least do that, save somewhat of my credit. Uh, yep. Yep. So uh, I yeah. wait a little, and you haven't got to the divorce yet. Uh, no. Plus, I got two kids, so that's even uh, more baggage. Uh, well, it's called bankruptcy. I think you're going to be looking into that. Well, sir, I, I you know, I, I don't think so. I, I, if this guy buys the house, I think we'll be okay. Oh, I will be. I know that because everything I put in her name. What, what do you mean everything you put in her name? Well, like the only thing that's in my name is the house, except for my truck and my motorcycle, and that's the only two things that I actually own in my name. Hey, yeah, but, but if you uh, if you are married without a prenup, it doesn't matter whose name you put on it. Oh, it's community wow. property. You, you're going to find that out from your attorney when you hire him, and hopefully that will be sooner than later. 
So what do you think on an attorney, a man or a woman? Wouldn't a, wouldn't a woman look better if I was divorcing a woman? Uh, the most important thing is to get the most competent individual, the most aggressive individual, uh -huh. but at the same time somebody who's not going to start a lot of unnecessary fighting Sure. Uh, and drag it out so you pay more and more and more. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get that overdone as soon as possible. Well, uh, you got to start shopping. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean they're pretty spendy too. But you know what? There is no amount of money worth on getting getting rid of a. Uh, a you know what I mean? I know. You know. People were asking me for years. You can afford a house. Why don't you buy a house? Everybody's buying a house. I had an ex-girlfriend who wanted me to buy houses so we could flip them. Oh, you know, we'll just get out of Home Depot, get a few cans of paint, a little plaster. We'll paint up and plaster and fix up and we'll sell it to some other sucker and we'll make money. Yeah. <laughs> We're all you flippers today. Now you're on the news. You're all victims. Oh, my goodness. They're taking my house away. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Rich. I'm the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First time, long time. Yes. Um, I'm in a not quite the same situation. Uh, I'm not doing bad on my mortgage. I got more of a, a advice question with regards to property tax. Now, I bought I bought my first house uh, roughly seven years ago. Uh, I had it for four years, and it, obviously everything went skyrocketed. I had the, the house went more than double in value. Um, Sold that house, took that money, and bought when it moved into a, the neighborhood I actually wanted to move into initially, but I couldn't afford. Um, anyway, and which mortgage, and let me guess, you still couldn't afford it. No, no, my mortgage is good. I, I don't have a problem with the mortgage. Um, what I'd like to try to find out if I can do is now the values are dropping. I want to know what the pros and the cons, or if it's even possible to get my property tax lowered because the values aren't what they were. So why should I be paying? You know, uh, well, it's also order. likely that you were not paying uh, what the property was worth in the first place. Your property taxes were based on some old assessment, I would bet. And that's easy enough to find out by uh, uh, checking. Uh, usually the county has a website where you can uh, check out your property and, uh, and, and see what the assessment is. Do you know what your assessment is? Yeah, my, my property tax was based on the, the, my, what I bought the house for. When I when I purchase this house, yeah. if you do the, the the you know the the math on it, I'm you know I'm, it was a seven hundred thousand dollar house, um, and you know I'm paying eight grand in property taxes a year. Right, so you're paying about what one point two percent, one point one five percent, or something like that. Yeah, and I want to see. I mean, obviously now I know the house is like I. I looked at comps just to, you know, online to see, you know, obviously it's not an official way of doing it, but just to see what the houses in my neighborhood are selling for now. And they've easily dropped 150 grand, which is fine. I don't have a problem all right, with that. All right, let's look at 150 grand for a second. 1.2% of 150 grand is how much? 1,500? Yeah. 1,700? I mean, how much would it cost to hire an attorney to get it lowered $1,700? You see, that's the question: is you would have to hire an attorney, or can you just have it reassessed? Well, you can have it reassessed, but I would never do that without an attorney, because at least in the case of my own homes, we're talking about a, a lot of money here. Uh, you can certainly go back and you can ask them to reassess it, okay. but if you've made any uh, improvements to the property, you run the risk that uh, your numbers are wrong, and that's the reason why I hire an attorney. I've made improvements to my property. Yeah. Now I'm trying to see, like, like you said, okay. I mean, obviously, attorneys aren't cheap, but um, in the long term, I'm not looking at moving anytime soon. I love where I live. I love my home. I love my neighborhood. It's it's where I want to, you know, be. And over the long term, I mean, if we're talking fifteen hundred, seventeen hundred bucks over how many years, you know? Well, what I mean? then, then you're years. right. It would be worth hiring an attorney for that purpose. And there are attorneys who specialize in that. Okay. I just didn't know if I hadn't heard of it before, and I'm going, I, it's, you know, obviously it'd be nice to get that lowered, you know. Um, my my view when I sold my place was, yeah, I was buying an inflated house, and I knew it, you know, but I sold at a ridiculous amount of money. So I figured if I'm going to, you know, my mortgage isn't going up that much more. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, a couple hundred bucks. But you see, the thing to do would have been to wait until, like, this year to buy rather than turning around and buying immediately. Yeah, 
Yeah, that would have been. <laughs> you know, wait until there's blood in the streets because at some point in the cycle, there's always blood in the streets. This is this cycle has gone on for decades. Yeah. House prices drop, then they drop to a point where everybody's buying. Then the prices get all inflated. Then the bubble breaks, and everybody's running for the hills. You want you want to be there to pick up the pieces when people are fleeing. You don't want to be joining the the crowd of of people uh, in in the maddening rush to buy houses. Cool. Well, appreciate the time, man. You take me out uh, old school. Certainly can. Eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, I spoke at a financial seminar of all things a few years ago. And one of these seminars where you had all these experts coming up and talking about mortgages and talking about uh, real estate and talking about how to find a realtor. And uh, I was uh, talking about how I became a self-made multimillionaire. And some person stood up in the crowd and says, this is a good time to buy real estate. This was, uh, what, about three or four years ago, Gary, because Gary was there. And I said, absolutely not. This is a terrible time to buy real estate. And you, you could see the look of the faces of the other people at the seminar. We're all there to try to convince you to buy real estate. They were all flipping out. Where are they now? I told the truth. Cause I, you know why? Because I had no vested interest in lying. Not saying any particular individual lied. I'm not saying what seminar it was. I'm just saying I spoke at a financial seminar, and I was the one saying this is not the time to buy. The time to buy is when there's blood in the streets. Been saying the same thing for years. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Jeremy on the Tom Like show. Hello. Hey, how's it? hey Tom. How's it going? Doing okay. Hey, uh, I got I got kind of the same dilemma as the other guys here. I was I could have been li- listening to you about five years ago. Um, I recently bought or actually in two thousand five I purchased a home with a ex girlfriend of mine, and uh, we lived there for about half a year, and I found out she started cheating on me. So I ended up taking off from the house. Why did you buy a house with a girlfriend? Uh, well, we've been together for about eight years. We planned on getting married. Which yeah, but, like but you were not married. Yeah, but we weren't married. Yeah, but we're planning on getting married. Her parents told us they had about $50,000 saved up for a wedding. And I thought it was going to go on. And like I said, six months down the line, we lived together. You know, she started cheating on me. So I ended up taking off from the house and... um Right now, I'm trying to get something off it, seeing if I could get any type of money. I was wondering if you know if it's, if it's possible. I to mean, do I've what? Saying... Possible to do what? Uh, excuse me? You want to know if it's possible to do what? Um, to get money off the property, because you, you still live there. Well, yeah, you need an attorney. Yeah, no, I, I already talked to a couple of them, but uh, they weren't too definite on me um, getting money or not. Well, I'm not an attorney. I know less than they do. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, have you heard of any cases? Or I, no, I, again, attorneys are the ones who study case law. I, I, I blab into a microphone. All yeah. I'm telling you uh, is now you're seeing why this is a bad idea. Right, right. And it's something I've been telling you for years is a bad idea. I don't know if you've been listening all these years, but I've been telling you don't do this. Yeah, no, I, I just started listening. Now it all makes sense to me. Now it does. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm when you talk. get divorced and two people own a house, the judge orders it sold and orders the proceeds split. Right. But right. you decided to uh, to test the the, the laws. <laughs> well, it kind of wasn't like that, though. Well, that's exactly what it was, because now you don't even know what to do. Right. right. And now even the attorneys don't know what to tell you. Yeah, well, I mean, I only talked to one of them. So I just want to see maybe if you knew, knew anything else about it. Well, and now, so what's happening now? You're paying half the expenses of the house, and you're not living in it. No, I'm not. I'm not paying any expenses. That's that's why I'm wondering if I'm able to still get money because I haven't been paying the mortgage since I lived there. Which is, is your not- name on the deed? Yes, it is. Well, you could very well be a fifty percent owner of that property, but mm-hmm. by the same token, is there any equity? I mean, uh, did you buy yeah. it with no down payment, and, uh, and has the value of the house dropped by any chance? No, actually, we bought it for three hundred twenty-four thousand, and um, I was looking with a real estate agent, and they said that the properties are around the area, or the same type of property, selling for about four hundred right now. Now, well, you need an attorney, son. And if I were you, I'd hire one. Post haste. Our email address: tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.